Welcome to the Finding Union podcast. This is a co-creation of divine guidance, ineffable intelligence, and the human identities of the bringers of change to activate a remembering within humanity with the information shared. The topics and the words spoken in these episodes will allow for the activation within each individual to create a deeper connection with others, self, and ultimately creator. Bringing new perspectives, this podcast will trigger a greater understanding to what the human experience's purpose is. As you continue to listen to these conversations, you will be activated into purging the falsities of your mind allowing your identity to dissolve, bringing more authenticity into your daily life. Here you will receive universal downloads, consciousness, and a place of remembering the true love of unconditional source connection. Thank you from all spaces throughout the universe for allowing yourself to connect deeply with the information being shared. Here is your host, Conduit of Universal Truth, Danielle Butler. Hi, I'm Danielle Butler and welcome to the Finding Union podcast. Today I'm welcoming a brother of mine, Robbie Thompson, to well to share his experience and knowledge um, in a space of cosmic universal truth. He is an amazing musician as well as a sound healer and um, I would say a cosmic god doing universal work here. Um, Thank you so much for joining us on today's episode. Um, I want to I want to just jump straight into it and I want to ask you really what got you to doing the work that you're doing here um, through the flow of your being and what the pivotal moment was for you that broke you out of the suffering of your mind? Okay, pivotal moment. That's a, that's a big question. <laughs> it's a great question. <laughs> you're a big one to start with. Uh, yeah, so what got me here? I suppose uh, like some of us, we always knew we were here for a reason. Uh, So as a young child, I remember, you know, always looking for the reasons and looking deeper into things. Uh, I always wanted, knew I wanted to be a musician from a very young age, but life kind of got in the way along, along the track. Like when my um, first son was born, well-meaning friends and family said to get a job, get a real job. When now I realize it's following your heart is your, you know, uh, your dreams are your true jo- job uh, <laughs> in life. And I think a lot of people are waking up to that now. So yeah, more recently, I've come back to that point in my life uh, where I've fully embraced my path, live in the flow. So I live van life. I've, I've changed my life around quite dramatically to be more in the flow. And uh, yeah, resonant frequencies have always been held dear to me. So from a young child, I used to want to be a rock star, but now I realize the the true meaning of freedom is to be a musician living free, pulling up where I choose and playing town to town uh times that i'm just called to um i'm a life path 11 so i get a lot of uh, psychic messages so i i've learned to listen to that and then if i don't listen to them you know soon uh the universe gets in the way and puts stumbling blocks up and then things happen so i've learned to definitely listen to messages but to define the ones that are truly heartfelt messages over external stuff that's going on in the collective and and negative thought patterns and things like that and processes that can be artificially you know uh, they've had the technology for many years to put words into people's minds and things like that so i've learned to uh ways to get rid of them but a defining moment i suppose there's been many defining moments but at one stage i was kind of 
felt like I'd lost my old life. So I used to be a property investor, used to uh, run a business club on the Gold Coast and train lots of business owners on in their online presence and websites. And then the universe sort of like kind of took all that away from me. So I um, my marriage fell apart and I was drinking myself to death and even though a lot of friends and family said, oh, you know, thought that I was very successful. I didn't feel very successful at the time in here because I wasn't following my true path, which is vibrational frequencies. Uh, I enjoyed what I did, but, you know, it was in the matrix world system right in the middle of that. So, uh, yeah, one a divining moment was probably when I first got got into a van and left behind. We sold all the properties that we had and... I woke up next to rivers and lakes and waterfalls and started really connecting with nature. So I think it was, um, if I could sum it up in one thing, it was probably barefoot earthing. So for years now, I haven't worn shoes and, and by connecting with nature each day. And uh, so now instead of using a bathroom to have a shower, I like to go to waterfalls and, and uh, like we did the other day and, and had amazing adventure there. And uh, I, I think barefoot earthing gives you a connection with mother. Uh, so, so many people are looking to the stars for what's really going on that I believe what they're missing is what especially we're here in Australia our original people from Australia were more about what was below so they have you know the song lines the I'm, I'm in Mullumbimby at the moment uh, where we've just had a, a major flood and I've been street performing here and uh, the mountains from Mullumbimby to Nimmin to the coast uh, they refer to as the song circles so it's all about what's below us. And uh, once, uh, just recently, I, I learned um, from from a teacher that uh, that has original blood from this land, uh, that where every river lies, where every creek is, there's another parallel river or creek below us. So you know that realization being earthing that a lot of the answers aren't above in the stars they're actually lying below us and that's that's a big inversion that i think we've been tricked to look up there when the truth is you know the diamonds are in your backyard and and uh the true gems of knowledge are actually below us mm. Mm. that really resonates and brings up um a lot in my own reflection of um, you can have all of the universal cosmic understanding and awareness, but unless it's grounded into your living and your presence and your being and you're here in this reality here living and connecting with nature. And I mean, I see nature and life as everything unfolding. So unless you're grounded in your experience and present with everything that's being presented to you, then you, you're really missing out on the true connection of what this experience is about and, and the unfolding and the, um, the fulfillment of what has been gifted to us uh, with, with from source and from creator in, in the human experience. Um, and Thank another you. another piece, there's actually two pieces in that share. Thank you um, for that. Um, because I find it fascinating hearing people that have kind of felt this from the beginning of their, you know, their human experience and they remember or they have an acknowledgement that they're here to, to live a certain way or they've always sort of looked outside of the box, whereas I feel I was very much the opposite in, in my experience and I wanted, to, I so desperately wanted to be normal and I wanted to fit in and I wanted to like not be the strange child and I wanted to be popular and seen and loved. And um, for me, I, I was so pushed away any idea of being spiritual or that there was magic. And if I, if I couldn't see it, <laughs> then I didn't believe it. And if I hadn't seen it, then it couldn't possibly be true, could it? Or... But I still always had this understanding of something being a higher, 
there's a higher um, truth or there was always a bigger something to have faith in or, or trust. Um, and I, I have always called it God and I don't have that religious conditioning or belief systems that have been programmed into my mind, which I'm so grateful for because I don't have that contraction or sting within me when someone says the word God. Um, but awakening for me, there was like just a, so much trauma in my experience that got me to that point. So I love hearing that you've always sort of had this connection and it's guided you throughout, which leads me to the next question you were sharing. You've had this, this guidance and this inner knowing or these whispers um, from spirit and how to discern what is guidance and how do you discern what is collective consciousness, thoughts, beliefs, programs showing up in your mental awareness? Okay, uh, yeah, so the way I discern it or the way I more just only allow positivity in is uh, whenever I hear a message, I, I initially was I learned this off um, some other psychic teachers that I was connected with uh, many years ago is to ask that it only be, you know, when you're receiving guidance, only be from higher dimensional or higher density as they call themselves uh, beings and for only your highest good, your the, the world truth, the goodness, for love, come from a place of pure love and pure white light. Mm -hmm. And after a while of um, consciously kind of thinking or saying that inside, uh, you kind of don't need to anymore, I found. It's just you, you, you've created an ability to block out more than negative thoughts. Now, um, obviously, there will be negative entities and thoughts always trying to permeate. And the more you're doing work on, the, on yourself, the more you'll be tested. Uh, so, yeah, I, I just felt I, I learned a bit more to discern uh, when I'm in a negative rut and I'm listening to negativity. Uh, I've found ways to change the polarity of, of where I'm feeling, the vibration, because we have to also understand that whilst a lot, a lot of your viewers probably know when you're in a low vibration or you're feeling especially anger, frustration, you're actually feeding entities that we might not see and, and they thrive off this. And that's why what's going on in the world is the last ditch effort to keep people in a low vibration. But um, people are uh, coming together in mass and, and trying to pull up vibration, just as uh, there was tests done many, many years ago of yogis in places like New York, where they'd sit together and they'd meditate and think positive thoughts. And they found when they checked the police stats, the crime rate lowered 25% while they were doing that. Uh, there's, there's evidence of great spiritual leaders coming into country and, and they say that the police know to put um, more people on long service leave because they don't need them when there's a great spiritual leader there because there's a lowering crime rate again. Uh, so we need to understand that when we're in a higher vibration, we're feeding uh, our angels and our, our, our pure guides as well. So I know who I'd rather feed. So I, I try and every, every time I get, obviously sometimes I'm gonna get down, I'm gonna get frustrated. Um, I'm a fire sign tiger. So sometimes I get really triggered and, and get angry, but I've done a lot of work on more recently anyway, in uh, being able to sit with that more and not be triggered and not to lose my cool. Uh, a big test has been street performing in the, st in the streets uh, in different towns because sometimes someone might come up and try and trigger you and you can see that there's a there might be some certain entities around them that's making them say what they do to try and trigger you and I've learned more just to smile and send that love now rather than to fight it because I realized you know th that when you're fighting something like that or arguing with someone who's who's triggering you you're just feeding those entities that want them to to start that anyway um i've also learned that 
the greatest healers I've met are the ones that need the most healing or the most, or, or have recognized we all need healing in this lifetime. And, you know, we've come here to learn to be love and come to, into this world that a lot see around us, a lot of pain and suffering and, and frustration and things like that. We've learned, we've come here and we've chosen to be here. Um, people need to recognize, I think, uh, like a lot of people are quite spiritual and they're quite uh now that will be watching the show uh but you might be in a place where oh i've got to do the work on myself I've got to do the work on myself before i can heal others um i'm here to say no you don't because it's 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 important to do both so if you're just doing the work on yourself constantly you're missing this true lesson of why we why we came here we came here for oneness and we came here to learn to be love and we came here for all these lessons so some of the greatest lessons i've learned is when i've let go of my own problems and then so why am i here so for me it's it's to play and spread love in the street it's for for those who uh are often i call it that often i'll pull up at places that are near a chemist or a bottle shop and I'll see them stumbling to the chemist in pain or, or going to get medication. Or I'll see them going to the bottle shop to drown their sorrows. And I've, I've shifted that perspective that I'm equally there for them as I am there for me as well to get over my past traumas and my addictions and things like that. So I'll get tested every day since I've given up alcohol. Someone will try and offer me a drink and i'll say no and it's it's like a test every day uh but by me also saying no i'm the, i feel i'm the, also there for them and i've had a lot of beautiful experiences uh like that one i one i remember was at palm beach at the gold coast it was on australia day and everyone was drinking and you know stumbling to the beach with their australian flags as they do and suddenly i wasn't drinking and i was thinking wow you know, I'm glad I'm not doing that anymore. And I was noticing the entities in everyone as, as they're drinking, they're bringing on the alcohol entities. And, and one guy, he came up and he was almost in tears. And he said, look, I've just got out of rehab. And I was about to go into that bottle shop and I heard your beautiful music. And I just sat and listened to the music for a while. And now I've decided I'm not going to go in. And I felt like, okay, I'm here healing myself, but at the same time, I'm getting out there and affecting others around me. So yeah, I think it's, it's pays to, for others to be aware of that, that they're the little things they do are affecting might be even just in their family, stopping that line of, for me, alcoholism in my family. Um, uh, my kids seeing that I've given up is going to help and and move on and then wh where can you move on from there there's other ways um to really get out there with what you're doing and and a lot of people i think uh in the mindset yet yeah, yeah as i said they they need to do that healing on themselves but they that's that's true but the biggest healings i've found is when i'm there for others and then i've learned the lesson through that as well and you know it, it has that ongoing if we can help two people out there you know my goal is is every day i i have a an effect if i'm playing in the street on two people and then they might have an effect on two people so you see how it exponentially grows and it's like if you double a cent over 30 to 60 days it turns into millions of dollars if you double a cent each time for a day so yeah you never know what's going to be the the ripple effect from from what you do and that was the words that I was thinking, the ripple effect um, mm. and the beautiful gift of that, that I think sometimes the mind can um, attach to those different stories, as you were saying about to be a healer, you have to heal yourself. And, and there is, there's truth in that, there's truth in everything, mm. <laughs> but it's actually discerning the, like discerning the truth from the lies um, and, and not getting stuck in the stories. And with the um i remember when 
I'd just done my first modality and I had someone comment and I'd started, I was like, I'm just going to get out there and I'm just going to do it. And I'm going to, you know, put myself in that space. And if I practice and I connect in more, then, you know, I'm, I'm making an effect and I'm, and I'm going to, you know, work. I knew that I'd be working on myself at the same time. And I had done up a little ad and I was, I was doing like these cheap healings and, Um, it was just because I needed to, you know, do that for myself, my own confidence, because otherwise I knew the stories of whatever I was going to create would stop me. And I see this all the time. I see so many people going, I'm going to go and do this modality, this modality. I'm going to learn this and I'm going to seek this knowledge. And then I'm going to find my way and my path and I'll know what to do. And they either don't action or they get stuck in that. Um, And, and it's because of how our mind likes to manipulate us and keep us from, you know, in, in fear. Really, that's ultimately what it is. It's, it's the fear that's feeding the control systems. <laughs> um, yeah. And a lady said to me that, that quote of, um, you know, you, need, you can't heal anyone. You, you barely healed yourself. And, you know, you don't even know what you're doing as a healer. And I... I was really offended by that. I was, I was definitely triggered, but I see now that if you're willing to step out of your own identity and let go of your own stories to hold space for someone, and you can honestly hold a safe container of safety and no judgment, then you are healing. That is, that's all you need to do. And it's, it's the ability to let go of your shit (laughs) that allows the healing to take place. So when you have, um, I guess, this other perspective of it, healers that have this superiority complex of I'm doing X, Y, and Z to you, that's, um, it's not actually allowing the healing to take place because you're not coming from a place of compassion. You're projecting your own internal experience onto another person. So it's, I think it's um, expanding those things out and letting someone go, come into their own heart space, which I think was around sort of like discerning um, guidance. So for, for me, I do a very similar thing. Of, I will only receive information from the higher sources. And if it's not of that, I will feel it. And Um, I won't act out of something that is not from those spaces. And now it's natural and I feel it like instantly if there's something that's coming from here, which is where my egoic thoughts come from. (laughs) Um, Or if there's some sort of um, influence in my field, then I feel that. And um, that's, it's natural now. It just comes as a part of being. Um, Yeah. Yeah. So, So... I guess um, there's a, the piece that I would love to hear you expand on a little bit more is um, around the current world circumstances and um, your interpretation of what's taking place in our human collective and on earth at the moment and why you're here. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, why I'm here? I'm here to for frequencies, frequencies and vibrations. So the more I study my, the sound healing, uh, I'm always learning in, in this life. I'm never close to learning. I never call myself an expert in anything because I, I always want to keep learning. And the deeper I research this stuff while I'm writing uh, and creating sound healing courses, running them for others, is the more I learn, the more I realize I I've got to learn uh, more uh, is that, but I'm coming to the understanding that frequency and vibration is everything. Sound is everything at its core level. Uh, All religions say that, whether it's the Om or the Amen or the big, if it's, if it's uh, science, it's the big bang. It's all sound created the flower of life, which I'm wearing. And, and from the flower of life uh, comes every shape and every size thing, you know, every, every, everything we perceive. So 
vibration is probably why I'm here. Uh, what was the other part to the question? Sorry. Why you, what's happening on earth is taking oh, what's happening on earth? Yes. Yes. What's happening on earth at the moment. So a lot of people are, are being caught up in what's been going on. So what's come to light is what's been going on for thousands and thousands of years. So people are suddenly waking up to the cabal and, and uh, the control mechanisms on the earth that a, a few certain families control everything and they're not, you know, and, and the things they get up to and, and they're up until now have been really focused in that and been in a very low vibration about that trying to expose it and why won't anyone listen well it's come to a point where so many of us know about that and it's it's not like it's just all of a sudden happened it's been happening for thousands of years so uh i believe we're coming to a beautiful time it's like sometimes to say recently um it's like we're coming out of the dark ages and we're finally coming into the light so it's a birth of a new world a birth of a new humanity a you know some people talk about tara another higher existence planet that's like earth and it's 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 of a higher density that than we are uh, so, you know, the fourth and fifth and sixth densities is, is Tara. And I believe we're coming into that, this new earth called Tara, that some call Tara. I believe we're raising our vibration rapidly. Uh, the, as it were termed, the cabal is losing their grip and they've lost this war already. Uh, there's some that will hold on to that lower states but it's like i believe certain you know the majority of us are ready to shift forward and ready to raise our vibration and when more and more people do and spread their light and understand that there's this new world that we can create now there's this new um, and we can enter these fourth fifth and beyond densities we will and we'll be waking up others it's like the story of the Hopi Indians that they went down to Agatha and they were they were invited down to Agatha as they were going through a low vibration state like we have recently and they were invited there to shine their light and bring up all the Agathans and and uh, make them realize the power that resides within them and also the oneness of the collective. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's interesting how a lot of our indigenous tribes across the earth originally had more that beehive mentality and that existence and that's where their true power came from and the more we look back on history it seems that like we've come through shifts of this like in in past civilizations the females have been in control uh whereas now it's 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 the end of the male control center of the world and it's coming to shift where we're combining our as as you mentioned i think before the the masculine the feminine feminine in ourselves and uh finding that oneness in ourselves finding that true love in our heart and then we can be true love to others uh the acceptance of ourselves and also understanding i suppose we don't need to fight to transform what could be considered as evil or nasty in this world is to send it love. And that's, that's one thing I had a hard time getting grips with in the last few years. Cause I've always, you know, my name is Robert, which means brave warrior. My I'm a fire tiger and, a, and uh, yeah, Sagittarius and uh, with Scorpio cast. So I've, I've always been like, Oh, I have to destroy this when I see something. But now I've realized to really, it's it's to transmute, not to destroy, because if we're fighting things constantly, we're just bringing a lower, lower vibration. And and before long, you become the evil that you see in the world, don't you, just by fighting things. And and there's, there's always going to be harm done in that way. Uh, just as the people that we perceive as being evil or low vibration and low entities, they actually believe they're doing good in this earth. Like they believe lowering the population for the good of the whole and that sort of thing. So if we can send love to everything, that's, 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 that's the big thing I've learned. 
And I believe humanity moving forward, that's where a lot of people are going to come to that place. Because if I can, I believe anyone can, because uh, I used to fight things head on, you know, God help anyone. To, um, and that comes back to also when someone tells you, uh, we mentioned in the previous question, when someone tells you you can't do something, uh, I've always taken that as, I'm going to do it. I've always been stubborn by that. If, and, and that's always been my biggest motivator in this life. If someone says I can't be a healer, I can't be the, you know, a musician or something like that. Um, I've always, yeah, that's, that's been a, a number one reason why I've had to do it. But now it's more coming from a, a realization that, yeah, I was always meant to do this. So I was always meant to run this path and, and the people listening, you were always meant to, find your life path here and and embrace it and some people will be saying i don't know my life path well ask the big questions it's 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 as simple as asking what is my life path and then you might not get the answer straight away but if you ask those big questions of yourself maybe tonight in your sleep something will come to you and a remembering of what did little johnny or sarah used to really want to do um when they were closer to true source when they were young uh before life got in the way of all the traumas and things like that or what is your life path that you've brought through other lives that you, has a culmination for this time and by asking those big questions the answers will soon come it's just most don't up until now ask those big questions of themselves mm. yeah and and uh, uh, that is something that I feel is so important for um, people to recognize within themselves is the more questions you ask, the more you open yourself to receive the awareness of what um, is, is in alignment with true source and with yeah. your true essence of who you are, because by opening that space, you are in a place of receiving. It's like, I don't have to have the answers. I don't have to know right now. But I have a willingness and openness to receiving that when it when it's gonna come. It's just yeah. in the seeking or in the frustration of I don't know these things and the contraction that takes place in the body and um, the energetic frequency. So I I um, also feel that I'm here to work on. Um, frequency and vibration <laughs> um, in in different ways, but in in the overall i guess the understanding of our words that we speak have a frequency and vibration so mm. the words that we speak are so important to know what am i actually communicating with yeah. um and feel that within the body and feel what it does but just by asking a question that opens the frequency and vibration to more receiving and it mm. will come through and and um you the more awareness that you have and the more you open up to shifting that the faster and the more rapid that it can take place and um it, it doesn't have to be hard and i think what you've you've shared with the the part around um everyone does truly believe they're doing the best like they really do believe that and i'm so on that page with you and it i communicate with um high frequencies and vibrations in um, the channeling or the transcribing that i do um, and that has been one of the very clear messages that i've received of don't see this as a spiritual war don't see this as good against evil, black against white, because how the higher um, densities um, see, see this situation is that everyone is coming from what their version of love is or their version of good is. Even the ones in control of our current earth or, or perceived control of our current situation on earth their story and narrative matches that for the good of where they're at in their consciousness level mm -hmm. and and that's where you can have love and compassion for everyone because you realize 
oh, okay, they're not actually coming from a place of evil. You know, evil doesn't exist, <laughs> really. <laughs> yeah. um, and, and it was so nice to hear you say that because I feel and why this podcast is so important for me to create is that people with that understanding and awareness, um, it's, it's something to express and get um, into the collective to understand so we can transcend and, and raise our frequency and vibration and come into a more, a new place of being. Exactly. Yeah, beautiful. Um, I I have I had a whole list of things to ask you, and my mind's just gone. Ooh, <laughs> I'm in the expansion of it all. Um, I want to know how your um, your divine guidance comes through in the work that you do. So, how does that channel through? How do you receive? I guess downloads or information or higher guidance and how does that come through in the music and the sound healing and the workshops that you create okay cool question because I, I feel this is uh really important to uh for others to 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 understand so especially when they're first coming across their gifts is i uh, Researching for my, my sound healing course, I found that there were studies done in the 80s and 90s of Reiki, Reiki healers, which are actually sound healers anyway, because what they found in the study when they were using a thing called a magnetometer to measure really low vibrational hertz ranges and ones we can't hear, uh, which are in the, you know, the eight hertz around that range, which are really healing frequencies like our brain when it's in sleep state. They were finding that these master Reiki healers were actually sending these healing tones of sound through their fingers. But when they interviewed the greatest of these healers, there was a common thread that they all understood that they were the instrument and and you know it, it wasn't them as this great power and a few things happen here so a lot of healers you might know are really exhausted after one or two healings in a day but some can do many many healings right and can be abundant for both themselves um in that way so they're able to make a lot more money doing their healing and 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 fund themselves well in this 3d world and have that flow on effect they're also able to heal a lot more people in one day so uh, do it more abundantly that way in, in their service to others and why is that so it's because these healers that believe that the healing comes through them they're forcing it uh, so they're putting all their do you see how they're putting so much more energy into it and they're exhausted after two or three healings a day or sometimes one healing a day it's it's totally you know wrecking them and afterwards and these master healers understood that they were an instrument so it flows through them and one thing i've come to understand now is you know i, I believe it's really important that's why i teach the ancient frequencies uh, that were once used and and the science behind it that's catching up and you know the how to run a great sound healing how to facilitate it but I believe the most important thing is that understanding that you're just an instrument once you know how to do these these things in your healing you're an instrument and it flows for you and in fact between you and the patient often the patient is the most important person in, in the healing, as you know. So like in science, the most, the most powerful effect known is the placebo effect. What's the placebo effect? That's a sugar pill. Of course, a sugar pill works better than a drug with side effects to create more side, you know, to sell more drugs in that profit equals sickness old medical model. But why does the, the placebo effect actually work? Because the placebo effect goes beyond that. It's the bedside manner of the healer or the, or the doctor. It's because it's triggering a healing within. So uh, when we, we, we're taught these inversions on words like uh, uh, what's incurable, most you know, we're taught that incurable means it cannot be cured, but the actual word actually means cured from within. 
helps. So understanding as a healer that the biggest effect is the patient and them coming in believing. So obviously we need to know what we're talking about as a healer. We need to um, really know what we're doing. And that's why, you know, I love to teach other healers the, the ancient frequencies and modalities, how to use tuning forks correctly to uh, upgrade DNA, to, to align and, and rotate the chakras correctly, to, uh, to tune the biofield and the aura and, and all the other sound healing instruments. But when I go into healing now, it's I have more effect understanding that I'm just an instrument that flows through. And then it comes to, you know, in religious terms, they used to talk about the Holy Trinity. What I believe that is now is this third essence that comes into play. So it's, it's the healer and the patient, which is one and two. And the number three, the powerful effect that comes into play between us, um, the patient coming in, believing that you can do what you can do and it's going to help them. So them resonating with you. Uh, that's that's why I don't do much, you know, pay-per-click advertising because I want to attract the right people that are going to find me anyway. I do put stuff out there, but it's all natural and organic. Um, and because I, I, we can't heal people who aren't ready for healing, can we? Uh, so we want to attract the people who are ready to take that step, who are ready to find that power within them. And then that third entity comes into play when you're with the, with the patient you're treating is that uh, it's kind of like the subtle energy or the life force energy. Some people call it Shakti. Some people call it uh, Vril. Some people call it uh, Chi, Prana. You know, um, it's, it's all the same thing. It's universal life force energy that comes into play. And I, I believe that's the Holy Trinity that comes into play there. Uh so yeah understanding that you can just be a vessel you can learn what you need to learn and that touches back on what we were talking about before there's people who become professional students and they never really actually end up doing anything with what they learn um avoid that avoid uh mentors who make you believe that you're nothing without them so that's that was a common thing and i've seen in especially even in the business world when i was in the business world uh, I had one guy come to me, he was going to work with us. And he said, Robbie, I can't work with you anymore. I said, why? He said, I was on this, uh, I was on this uh, course online over the weekend. It was a free course. And the guy used NLP on me and he made me believe that I'm, I can't sell and I can't teach uh, without him. And he used that to, to, you know, sell me this course. But now I believe I can't do this stuff without him. And, you know, there's, there's, there's people who are, who are marketing their products, services, who are doing that. Uh, I believe the total opposite is how you, uh, as a teacher, you should be. So, so as a teacher, I believe teaching people first and foremost, that the power is within them, that uh, they can go out on their own and they can, you know, I would love to see my students in, in sound healing, take where I've been and go that extra, you know, beyond that. And I'd love to see them creating magic in this world uh, rather than have them under me always as students. Um, so that's, that's why I create courses that are quicker and, you know, more three hour courses that they can have all these skills and get all this vital information and then they can move out and go and use that stuff. So give them the, the you know, rather than spread it out in weeks and weeks of jargon. Uh, so, so that they're ready to go and ready to heal others. Yeah. I, so, yeah, most importantly, I think understanding that once we learn this stuff, we are a channel for it. We don't have to own it, it and understand that it flows through you. Just like great musicians, I've heard say the the drummer out of uh, the Doors, a great band from the seventies. Uh, he said, "I always remember this in this interview. He was saying music flows through you; you don't own it." And he said, "I, I was just happy the muse was hanging around while Jim was alive." And you know that's where the beauty came from. Their music they they had a shack. I think it was in California by the ocean. And they just channeled that music through and, and, and wrote some such beautiful music that way. Mm -hmm.
And you um, hear that reference actually a lot in, in, in music. And I mean, I'm not well versed or educated in the music industry at all. Um, but the pieces that I have heard, there's a being in flow state. And mm. I think the flow state is, is a great, um, another uh, explanation to what you're saying about being the instrument. I haven't heard that. Um, and I like, I, I love the idea of thinking of myself as an instrument. I always have just referred to myself as, as the vessel or the channel or the, um, you know, the, the output input <laughs> piece. Um, and, and I'm very well aware that it's not me doing the healing. I um, have the only reason that I have come to a place of being so powerful in my own healings is because I've chosen to let go of those ideas and the mind side of things. So I'm clear for source, which I see as um, being that third piece to the, to the relationship of for source to do its work for source yeah. to um, trigger, remind, activate, clear, and do everything that's required within that person's receivability at that time. Um, and when you choose to be in, in flow like that, and that's when the most powerful um, shifts happen for people because you're not forcing, you're just allowing. And in the state of allowing, then the other the the receiver is able to also recognize that vibrational frequency and feel the safety of going into allowing and receiving um which is really magical i guess that's another term of the ripple effect <laughs> yes um oh, i feel like i'm gonna check my notes now <laughs> um Actually, yeah, that's, that, that was a really um, interesting piece. So I wanted to know how often you are receiving um, your divine guidance. Like how often does life speak to you? How often do you get, um, are you connected with true source to receive this higher um, information? Yeah, well, yes, now more than ever, uh, because Years ago, I made the choice to change my life completely, uh, to be in a flow state constantly. So it's only now when I have courses that I have to actually be somewhere at a certain date. So people will say to me, where are you street performing today? Sometimes I can't even answer which, which state of Australia I'll be in, whether it's New South Wales, Victoria or Queensland uh, when I'm when the borders are open, obviously, and, 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 you know, and now they are. Uh, so yeah, I just, I was in Queensland. Now I'm in New South Wales. I'll, I'll hear the message day to day. Uh, when, when I choose to play somewhere, often I'll just be driving along and I'll get a message play here. And sometimes I'll wonder why I'm being told to play here. And then something, fortuitous or serendipitous the better word will happen so it might not just be financial abundance when i'm playing it might be i'm meant to meet the right person uh someone i've i've been connected with for a long time and it's finally time for us to meet and life's become quite magic that way and i'm also here to tell others out there who, who might be listening who are coming into their gifts and thinking like I did, I couldn't possibly fight be abundant financially as well doing what I have to do with my gift and I have to lead that life of, of always struggle. No, you don't. And more recently, I've chosen to, especially since um, I've been getting back into practices like uh, a bit of yoga and meditation, in my meditation in the morning, what I've been doing is is imagining abundance to flow through me throughout the day and not just financial, but in, in many other ways. But it, it is nice to be um, given gifts as I travel that are, that are kind of 
value to the the effort we put in uh, to hone our skills as well so often i think you know i've been playing guitar many many years many thousands of hours practice so now i can manifest 50 dollar notes as gifts and things like that uh, coming in and uh all sorts of like what I love about life in the flow and, and living in the flow is, you know, I'll go to towns like here, Mullumbimby just recently, even more valuable than the, the money people put in. Some people, um, I remember just recently a, a girl and a guy was sitting listening in a car and I could see the love, um, you know, f- you know, coming from, you know, the, the aura lighting up in their car while I was playing and they listened for quite a while. And then, the lady comes out and she's holding this present for me, you know, really, and really lovingly gave it to me, placed it to me. And, and, you know, you could tell it was a total heart gift and it was a beautiful rose quartz or, you know, sometimes people are giving me different things like uh, handmade beads from overseas. And they tell me the country it's come from and uh, yeah, so many, you know, food and, and, and gifts like that. And I've realized, yeah, I can live that way, be more abundant. If, if you're struggling in society, like three dimensionally, do we have to keep up with the Joneses? Do we have to have, you know, the second car, the house mortgage repayments? Cause I found for me personally, I had to be there to learn how much I love this life now. But when I was renting out properties and renovating them and I was a property investor and, and I, uh, ran business clubs and business um, trainings and things like that. And I lived in the Gold Coast. Uh, I wasn't as happy as I am now living free. And I've realized less is more as well. So you can still be abundant doing what you do and you can help a lot more people this way. Like for my life isn't for everyone. I love the van life. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm coming to you live from the van at the moment. And uh, it, it's, it's a house on wheels, really. It's, it's small. It, it has what I need in it. I can fit my guitars. I can, you know, I've got a little kitchen. I've, you know, I've got everything I need to live. And I'm able to go from town to town and, and, and spread the word of vibrational frequencies, the, you know, the music. So now when I come back to a different town, uh, because I don't have a fixed place of address anymore, uh, I can, people come up to me and they go like, where have you been? And oh, I bought your album back then and, and I've been playing it all the time. And it's like you're a fresh face to each town, but you're remembered again. So, and it's a beautiful experience. Like recently I was up in uh, Gladstone and this lady, she put a note in, she said, where have you been? We've missed you. And I said, oh, that's so nice. Thank you. And I felt this love from her. And I said, I haven't been here in two years. And she said to me, we would never forget you. So as a healer, you can, you can change your life around if, if you choose to. And, but with also internet now, you can, you can do things from anywhere and help people all around the world as well. So it's embracing those both sides uh, to the coin. But yeah, the, the flow state has, has been around for me constantly now um, for the last few years and and i love it i love being in a state a state where you know i have no job no reliance on government support and i can do what i love to do and only what i love to do i can choose when to do my street performances which i feel are, are just as important as sound healings because sometimes thousands of people sometimes if i'm in the middle of a mall in a city tens of thousands of people walk past and they might even not even know that I'm sending them out healing love, but I believe their, their biofield and their aura and their true divine self is getting benefit for them if they're open to receiving it. And then it's nice because I can choose, like um, after, after we have uh, this call that we're having now, I'll be going to a waterfall to, to replenish myself. And, and, you know, uh, it's, it's important as a healer that we find ways in the flow that we can replenish ourselves as well. So, uh, you know, when I believe now that when you're facing the waterfall, 
you're receiving energy from it. And then when you're turned away from the waterfall, you're letting go of all that doesn't serve you. And so, so now I like to do that. I like to just get my face right into a waterfall and stay there for a while and receive that energy, that powerful energy. And then I like to turn around and just let go of anything I don't need and all that stuff that, you know, most people carry around. And that's the way after giving vibrational healings to others, I give a vibrational healing to myself at the waterfall. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Uh, I do recommend to those who are up for it to change your life so you can be in flow state. And the bonus of living van life is I don't have mortgage repayments anymore. There's one state where I remember one time I had 10 properties and the rates bills that came in for all that, it was like, you know, and people thought I was, you know, friends who vibrated where I was at back then. They thought I was successful. And I was like, no, you go on holidays and I have to come up with all these rates bills. Or I, I just finished renovating one property and then a tenant trash is another one. Now, I used to love learning the skills to do that. I used to enjoy the creativity of, of that. But my life now is in more of a flow state, I believe, because I'm not stuck to one project anywhere. Uh, I do my trainings and they're organized, but the rest of the life is just listening to guidance and where do I need to be today? Or where would I like to be today from the heart as well? And yeah, it's, it's, it's more a world of creation. And it's funny, I, I found that I can manifest so much more that way. So sometimes you might be thinking as a healer, oh, I've got to come up with this money for this bill or whatever. And what I found is sometimes when I'm in that state of mind to that, you know, um, uh, might be, yeah, oh, I have to sell so much this week or whatever, or, or receive that much in donations for my service this week, I'll go to waterfall and then I'll be out of service. And then from that, what's happening at the waterfall, that receiving of the energy and then letting go, I'll, this has often happened. I'll drive back from the waterfall feeling fantastic rather than focusing on that, you know, trying to sell my services. And as soon as I get back into mobile phone reception, I'll have like, oh, someone's bought your, your sound healing training online because it's just really resonated with them. And I believe that as healers, we have to understand that that's because of the vibration we're at. If we're in a state of instant manifestation, a state of flow in a state of enjoyment in our lives. That's when the true wealth in our heart and also in our, our pocket will come. Yes, definitely. The piece, um, instant manifestation is something that's, um, I think for a while I had this concept and idea that, you know, you have, that you can't instantly manifest something. And I even in that thought, it blocks the, <laughs> it, it manifesting into the physical reality. And the more that I've let go of that and just been connected to my heart, which is, is my main focus now too, is to stay in flow and um, just find the present moment. And in the present moment, the stories aren't there and the space is created and the connection and the receiving and, um, the gifting and your energy, um, your frequency and vibration rises from there, is that in that place, when you do receive some sort of guidance, it's like you receive it and you can act on it in inspired flow action. And then because you're not attached to it, you release it and it just, things just, they do, they manifest like instantaneously now at this point in in our collective or our earth's uh, resonance it is um you you can do that and you don't have to wait for a physical manifestation to show up way down the track or um that's just a a place of our own minds blocking our receiving um yes. Thank you so much. I do want to ask you um, before we close off, how, what, for people that are resonating with you, Robbie, how can they, what can they do if they're not in your physical experience? How can they can get, get in touch with your services? What do you offer? Um, where can they find you online um, so that they can connect with you? 
Fantastic. Uh, online, they can find me at awakentheancient.org. So that's uh, that's where we have our sound healing practitioners certificate course. So people, uh, we, we do it, run them physically in Australia, but also now people from other sides of Australia, other sides of the world, even so from America, England, we we have that uh, that course available uh, in online in video and text format now. And we've had some amazing results from that. So check that out if you're interested at awakentheancient.org. And yeah, uh, I'm, I'm also on uh, social media. So on um, Vibrational Wizard on Instagram and Robbie Thompson Vibrational Wizard on Facebook. And I want to say thanks, Danielle, for having me on this on, on your podcast. And it's, it's been really great to connect with you. And uh, I really love receiving your channeled stuff, both online and, and meeting you in person and uh, your transmissions. Uh, the light language really activates me well and just yeah really want to encourage you to keep putting out those transmissions because it's such a beautiful thing you're doing for others and activating them in so many ways thank you i so i'm so receiving that because i think a part of my own experience um is especially from a musician <laughs> right because i have this i have stories around but you're not a singer, you have no musical skills. And so for me to release that and be able to just flow with it and to have, you know, your own personal experience of receiving those frequencies and vibrations and what you feel within your body is, um, is a real gift for me to receive that. And I, I really feel that in my heart. So thank you so much. Thank you for making the time to be here on the Finding Union pod pod podcast. <laughs> um, and I look forward to our next connections. <laughs> Me too. Sending you lots of love, Danielle. Yeah, you too. <laughs>